What's up, fellas? It's May 23rd, and today is a solo episode. On Tuesdays, we release our main interviews, and today I'm taking you into a conversation about our brotherhood and into some personal experiences that uh, I've had over the past week and places, as, as I teach my son, places where I'm winning and places where I'm learning. And so if you're new to this podcast, I want to welcome you. I'm John Vroman. This is Front Row Dads, and this is the place for guys who want to be family men with businesses, not businessmen with families. And if you've been with us for for, uh, you know, for weeks and months and perhaps even since we began this thing in 2016, I want to say thanks for being uh, committed to yourself, to your family, and ultimately to the world because the stronger you are, the stronger everybody can be. And so, guys, I want to talk today a little, a little bit about, um, first of all, a trip that I had to San Diego five days, and the purpose of this adventure was to scout out locations for our October dad's retreat, uh, October 23rd through the 25th, and we usually get about 40 guys together to have some incredible conversations to get real and raw about what's working and where we're learning and, and how we can improve so that we can be the best husbands, the best fathers, the best family man possible, and we all want to do that, and we, heck, we do it with our businesses. We learn, we grow, we go to events, uh, we, strat we put plans in place and strategize, but yet a lot of us don't do that as effectively in our families. And the question is, why not? So we have created these events, which I have benefited from perhaps as, as much, if not more than everybody else. And, and if you've heard uh, me say, if you've been a part of this community, you know that I've said I didn't start this because I'm a world class husband and father. It's because I wanted to be and I wanted to learn with and from other amazing men. And I think we're all social creatures and I think we like to learn in that way. And so we've gotten a lot of traction in this brotherhood because of the ways in which we're learning things that, hey, you could go Google till you're blue in the face and read a ton of books, which are great because I do both. But uh, how I really like to learn is with other people. So um, I was out there scouting out locations. And one thing I did, which uh, I think it could be a win, was a win for me and I think could be a real win for everybody listening to this, is to get guys together for some great conversation. And uh, what I did is I, I had a, we had a dinner, five people, and the focus was on family life. And this, these are, so we had my buddy Kelly Gilson, who is a front row dad, uh, who's actually in charge of uh, band creation in our group. And bands are like small groups. So about four guys who meet on a regular basis and talk about family life. The only rule in our band, and I know in many other bands in our brotherhood, is that there's no business talk. Kelly leads that part of our group. Uh, we also had Evan, who uh, is an amazing guy, Evan Keller, who um, incredible businessman, wonderful human, one of the most talented guys. Uh, he joined in. He lives in San Diego. My buddy, Tony D. Lorenzo, who runs One Extraordinary Marriage, uh, an, in an incredible podcast, by the way. It may be the biggest marriage podcast in the world. And they've been doing this for nine years. They have an incredible audience. And he was there with us. And Aaron West, who is a uh, owns a real estate uh, company that is just, he's just crushing it in business. But what's most impressive about Aaron is it's not just his business success. It's how he lives his life outside of his business, which I know is all integrated. It all affects uh, each other. But Aaron is an amazing man uh, who has a wonderful wife, Jennifer, uh, uh, beautiful kids. And he's an Ironman triathlete, just this incredible guy. And he added so much value to the conversation. And one of the things I did at the beginning of the dinner was I said, guys, look, a couple rules. So number one is let's have one conversation, right? I, I really appreciate that when we're in those small dinner time conversations is one conversation. And I said, the other thing is let's get past all the topical stuff and let's just get right into it. Let's talk about what was your biggest breakthrough that you experienced over the past year, right? What happened? What did you learn? And share that with the group. And we did that around the table and ultimately led to some incredible conversation. And I walked away feeling like this was such a great dinner with these incredible men who are so wise. And I walked away a better human being. And I thought, why am I not doing this in all the cities that I travel to? You know, I do probably 15 to 20 keynote speeches a year. And when I go to these cities that I get, there's all my friends there that I haven't seen in a long time. Why am I not getting at least a small dinner together to hang out with my friends? You know, my buddy Jason Gaynard wrote a book about mastermind dinners and this idea of pulling people together in conversation and ultimately collaborating, you know, and that's, that's the thing. So 
listen, part of building front row dads in our membership area is all about how to build connections, build bridges, build relationships. That's a huge part of it. In fact, it could be the majority of it, right? Is that if we, we can develop these relationships where we can be open and real and, and vulnerable with our brothers and talk about the areas in life where we're winning and those where we're failing slash learning, um, we have a much better opportunity to advance for ourselves, for our families, and for the world. And so, uh, you know, I'm committed to doing more of these dinners, but it just reminded me that for all of you, number one, uh, if you aren't getting together with other men that you value to have quality conversations about the things that matter most, I would put that as a high priority on the list of things to set up. And that might just be getting together with guys and doing something like, you know, going and playing disc golf, right, where you could have great conversation along the way. Um, getting some dinners together. It could be once a quarter or once a month. Whatever it is, find a group of people, right? I, I think that four to six is a really good number. Even at dinners, you think about a round table of four to six people where everybody can be having one conversation. Every voice can be heard. You're not so far apart from somebody else. Sometimes you get on that long rectangular table and there's 10 people there. It always just breaks off into individual conversations. And inevitably somebody is sitting there between, you know, the person to their right who's talking with somebody else, the person to their left who's talking to somebody else. And, and then that you see it, they grab their phone, they go to the bathroom, they kind of check out or they try to listen in to somebody else's conversation. But if you can, create an environment and and in person is always the best but virtually if not where you can have these incredible conversations and you know there's lots of ways that you can structure those dinners there's lots of ways that you can approach a group conversation and i don't think one way is better than another i have a personal preference and that is one conversation at the table and i like to pose questions to the table you know at our last dad's retreat we put uh index cards on the table with sharpie markers and we asked the guys to write a question that they would want to present to the table, that they would like to know the answers uh, to that question from all the other guys at the table. They wrote that question down, they put it in the center, and basically like one person at the table would take the stack, they'd, they'd randomly select one of the questions from the deck, and then everybody would go around at the table and answer that question. And then when they were done with that, they'd, they'd grab the next question and everybody would answer it at the table. And I thought that worked out really, really well. And so that, there's so much power in that because not only does everybody at the table get a chance to potentially ask a question, but everybody at the table has a voice because you're going around the circle. And you know, if, you're, if you don't do that, what you run the risk of sometimes is somebody who's very extroverted or has a lot of opinions will dominate the conversation. And somebody that's a little bit more introverted won't be able to chime in or participate. So how we structure these engagements can be very important who is at those dinners is also very important. So I, I would just encourage all of you to create some type of system, brotherhood, accountability, check-in, whatever it is in your life where you could have these conversations with people that you value on subjects that you value. And, uh, and that's what we try to do in Front Row Dads. So when somebody joins, I say, hey, look, when you join, people often ask, what does joining mean? And I go, well, there's a, there's a private Facebook group, private conversation happening amongst members only, uh, where I tend to participate more in that space. Uh, and, and then there's number two, there's bands. So that's a small group of men, right? Four to five, usually guys getting together once a month for these conversations. There's also monthly calls where all of our guys get together on a video chat. They can ask questions. They can offer insights. We, we bring in guest experts to talk on the subjects of marriage and parenting and managing our emotions and health and all those things that relate to being an epic family man. Um, and then we, of course, have these live events. All those are different layers and different approaches to getting people together into conversation. Because when we change conversations, we change uh, our lives. We change our futures. We change the futures for our kids when we have these enriching conversations. So my invite to you guys is to do just that. So that's part one of the solo show here. Uh, number two, I wanted to talk about something that was on my plate this week, a conversation that was occurring between my wife and I, and then ultimately my oldest son, Tiger, and I wanted to share it with you. I also want to ask that if you have thoughts about this, chime in on the open Facebook group. If you just go to Facebook and type in Front Road Ads, 
you can see there's about 900 men there right now having conversations around family life. And this is a conversation I want to continue to have, which is how do you build confidence in your kids? Or said another way is how can you help confidence to emerge within your children? How do you put your kids, regardless of what age, right? I'm talking from day one until the rest of their life. How do we as fathers create environments that nurture and bring about confidence in our kids? What sports do we put them in? Coaches do we find for them? How hard do we push our kids like to, to challenge them? When do we say, hey, you're giving your best, just keep trying? When do we let people retreat to advance? Or when is it okay to just say, that's not for me because I can think about times in my life when quitting right, was actually the right move, right? Sometimes we can stubbornly persist ahead and not pay attention to our own internal voice. There's a difference there of like bailing early and recognizing when something isn't working and pivoting or changing. We do that in business a lot. Like, hey, let's monitor the metrics. You'll see the metrics. Let's pay attention. Is that working? Do we need to try a different approach? But, you know, at some point we might have to abandon an idea. We might have to say that was a bad investment. We might have to pivot. With kids, it's the same thing. So how do we do all that? It's a very complicated thing, especially when you're involving personalities, people, and all the, the DNA and chemistry that go into making up the complexity of a human being. Well, I knew, let me take you back into, uh, let me take you, take you to where this all started for me, which is that, you know, I, I knew something was off with his confidence and where it showed up, it was a very specific place. He was writing a card to one of his friends for a birthday party. And he was very upset at himself that he wasn't writing well, that his his letters weren't great. And in fact, on the card, he had ended up crossing out the words. And he was very upset because now the card was ruined. And, uh, you know, part of my goal in that moment as a dad was just to stay calm, was, just, was to acknowledge his feelings and say, hey, buddy, I, you know, man, I... I get that could really make you upset. You know, uh, I've messed up plenty of cards in my life and I got upset as well. So I can relate to that 100%. Let's come up with a creative way that we can fix this and let's find, find a solution here together. And I find that sometimes when he's really upset, you know, uh, that finding a solution together really works well. There are times when I need him to find the solution on his own without any support. There are also times when it's like, hey, let's sit down together and work on this uh, as a team. That is also a good strategy, in my opinion. And again, all this is opinion. I could totally change my mind a, a month from now and come back and say, everything I said on the podcast is totally wrong, in my opinion. Now I think this. That's evolution, right? That's life. I mean, how do we not? But I have to share the best that I've got right now with you in the moments until I've got something better. And then I'll share that. And that's why this is going to be a journey for all of us. But I will tell you that he got really upset at this postcard um, you know, or at, at the uh, card that he had messed up. But then what we decided is we were just going to take a, another sheet of paper, cut it out, colorful sheet of paper, paste it over the messed up part of the card. I said, that'll actually add to the colors of the card. It'll be kind of cool. It'll add to the texture and we'll rewrite the note there. But I could tell that my son was really unhappy at his ability to write. And I started thinking, I started traveling down that road a little bit about what does this really mean? What's underneath of that? How else, how, how is this affecting his life on a bigger scale? And what I got to is these little things in his life, these little skills add up to a bigger confidence that he can presumably uh, embody. And so one of them uh, is writing uh, for him. Another one is math. So let me tell you what I did. And I'd love to know what you would have done differently in this situation because I'm sure there's so many great ideas out there from all of you men who uh, would tell me 10 things I didn't even think about in the moment that I could have done to support my son. But here's what I did. In the moment, I just supported him in writing the card. I kept it cool. I kept him focused. I helped him stay focused on just finding a solution. And we did. We finished the card. We got it. It was great. But I said, what's the strategy now moving ahead? How can I help him to strengthen his writing skills and while we're on it, strengthen his math skills? And here's what I came up with. What we came up with was, number one, we're gonna practice writing. 
But I thought, you know, there's one thing to just sit down and just practice writing words or letters, but there's other creative ways that I could get him writing that involve, uh, that are probably uh, multi-dimensional. So as an example, uh, could we write thank you letters to people together? And in writing thank you letters, we're not only getting great, uh, sending out good vibes and accomplishing something there, but we're practicing writing with a purpose, right? Not just to sit down and write meaningless words for the sake of writing them. The other thing that we did was we talked about values. And I said, Tiger, what is it that you value about life? I said, let's write down some of your values. And we had this whole 20 minute conversation about what Tiger values. Now that led to, well, what is a value? And you know, we had some, we had some great conversation. My wife was in the kitchen at the moment um, preparing dinner and we were sitting at the kitchen table. And what was really cool is like, I would say, Tiger, what do you value? And he would say, collecting putty. You know, if you listen to this podcast, you know that I've talked about my son and his, uh, his, how putty lights him up. Like he loves slime and putty. And I said, okay, you love collecting putty. And rather than stopping there, right, about the, you value putty, I said, what is it about putty that you value? Now, this is where you got a little hung up and I had to, like, we had to be patient and we had to process this a little bit, but what was it about putty that you value, Tiger? And he thought, and we processed it, and ultimately what we got to, and I'm shorting a 20 minute conversation into a couple minutes here for you guys, is that what he really values is the relationships that he forms through putty. That how his friends like see his putty collection and they're like, oh, that's so cool. And because his friends think it's so cool and they can talk about putty and trade putty, it strengthens his relationships. So what he really values is relationships and putty is the tool that he's using to connect with people. So we talked about that and he could start to see how underneath the surface when you just start asking the questions and, and why is that important, right? So why is having a lot of putty important to you, right? And why is that important to you? And why is that important to you? And we dug down and we got to what were his real values. And one of his real values is relationships, right? And then we got to, well, what else does he value? And he said he values Adidas clothing. Well, this is kind of new. This is in the last few months that Tiger has learned about brands and somebody else at school who wears Adidas or talks about Adidas or loves Adidas has got Tiger excited about Adidas. And so we talked about, well, do you really value Adidas or what is it that Adidas allows you to do? And he says, Adidas allows me to like, when I go to school, I feel good about myself. And I said, and why do you feel good about yourself? He says, because other people will see that I have Adidas and they'll be like, oh, that's really cool. And you get significance. So we talked about, hey, oh, so what you value, you might value significance or being important. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are certainly unhealthy versions of what significance looks like, but just in general, the idea of valuing being important in a community or being recognized, right? Being witnessed, being affirmed, being loved. All these things were all values that we got a chance to talk about and explore because of ultimately going back to this initial part, which is how do we build more confidence? Let's get his writing skills up. How can we turn writing into a creative activity? Let's talk about values and have him write all those down, right? And then, um, and I would write the word, by the way, and then he would write it and we would try to see if, how close could he get it to my handwriting. So we, we gamified it a little bit. But, um, but I learned so much about Tiger in this process of talking about his values. He learned about himself. I learned about his values. And boy, we walked away from that uh, with, with a lot more um, uh, understanding of, of ourselves and each other, which is really great. Okay, so I hope that's a value to you guys. And I, again, I would love to know, how do you build confidence in your kids? And I don't think this like solves the whole thing. And like, oh, after we sat down and wrote values that he's going to be confident for the rest of his life. But I could see that we, we were moving the needle and that we were, we were moving the ball forward a little bit at a time there. Um, and I feel really good about that as a dad, that I engaged, I was creative, I found the system, it worked. Um, now, it's not like Tiger at the end stood up and go, oh, dad, you're the best. Like, you're so smart. I now understand myself. I, you understand me. We understand each other. I feel so much more confident. That wasn't his response. It was probably more like, are we done yet? <laughs> are we done with these stupid values? But I know it's sinking in. I know he's getting it, right? I know that we're creating something together here and making change. So anyway, um, you know, one last part about this building confidence and understanding what he values is that then 
this whole value conversation parlayed into what do we do for his birthday? And so his birthday is coming up. My wife and I sit down and say, all right, well, what does he value? Right? What does he value? And because we knew so much more about our son, because we've been thinking about what he values, because we have conversations with him about what he values, then we're able to then craft a birthday that speaks to his heart. And I think that being celebrated, being honored, somebody going out of their way to make you a big deal because you're important to them, because you're important to this world, because we want to lift you up, because we want to make you the rock star. I don't think we have to worry in those moments of like spoiling our kids or like, I don't want to tell them they're too awesome because then they'll feel all entitled. And, you know, and I think we want to take moments in life where we really pour into people, where we go out of our way. I mean, that's what we do with Front Row Foundation is we take a day to make somebody feel like a total rock star, right? And I don't think we're going to ruin people forever if we take a day and make a big deal out of them, right? And I used to think that that would be, that would actually happen. But what's interesting is I would make a huge deal out of people that I didn't even, I barely even knew through the charity, but at home, I wasn't doing it for my own family. And by the way, I could share a whole big realization I had about that, which I know if I start down that rabbit hole right now, I'll, I'll keep this podcast going for another 20 minutes. But one day I want to tell, tell you guys, if you're interested, let me know. I'll maybe post the question or ping me or let me know. I'll tell you about why I struggle celebrating my wife on Mother's Day or birthdays or holidays. It hit me like a ton of rocks recently in a meditation. I got so clear about why I struggle with that. So I'm going to save that for another episode. If you're interested, let me know. Just ping me, tell me, hit me up anywhere. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place there. So just let me know if that's of interest to you. And I'll know that you're listening to this. I'll know it might be worth it to, to share that story. All right, so that's my that's confidence building with Tiger. I wanted to share that with you today. Last couple things I'm going to mention, and then we're out of here for today for the solo show. Number one, if you are not joining the conversation on Facebook, please do go right now. Push pause on this episode. Go to uh, Facebook, type in Front Row Dads, and just join the free online conversation that's happening there so that you can share your wins, ask your questions, and that we can start to build this brotherhood uh, with that group of amazing men. So join the Facebook group. I would also like to pose, since you're listening to this just a few days before Labor Day weekend, that if you're listening to this prior to the weekend, jump in there and talk about how are you going to be celebrating with your family? How do you talk to your family about Memorial Day? You know, for years, it would just be like Memorial Day is a day off and that's it. In fact, I never even spend 10 seconds talking to my kids about what even is Memorial Day <laughs> and like why is it important but this Memorial Day maybe take five minutes go online if you don't have a good explanation google it with your kids teach them how to find out read the explanation have them read the explanation to you about what is Memorial Day and why does it matter and think about maybe people in your life that um, you know that you could honor and recognize on Memorial Day maybe you can ask your family how can we really not just barbecue and get on a boat or do whatever on Memorial Day, not just take a day off, but actually do what Memorial Day is set aside to do, which is to honor uh, people who have died in, in service for our country, right? And uh, that is something that we could all do. We could all do that on that day, even if it's for just a couple minutes, to bring meaning to our moments with holidays like that. So how can we make a big deal out of Memorial Day for our families, not just how do we make grilling amazing, but how can we actually bring meaning to the family? And it doesn't have to be more than a couple minutes, a couple questions, a quick discussion, but, but bring that up at some point would be my invite. And I'd like to know how you are going to celebrate Memorial Day, uh, whether it be that more meaningful way or just any way. Like, what are your traditions? Like, do you have family traditions? Like, this is what we do on Memorial Day. And uh, think about that and maybe share them in the group. I'd love to, to learn from all of you. Last thing I'll, I'll say here, last two things actually. One is that many of you have asked about how do I join Front Row Dads? Well, we have a monthly membership program for a, for a small fee every month. You get a chance to join this elite group of men. We have uh, approaching 90 men right now in the program and we have new guys joining uh, each and every week. And if you are somebody out there who is like, I'm a family man with a business. Uh, I resonate with what you talk about, John. I want to, I want to get to know these guys on a deeper level. I value my family. Hey, I invest in my business. Why wouldn't I invest in my family to learn? 
that is why we put the group together. And so Father's Day, we're going to be opening up for membership. So if you want to know when we open up membership, you get all the details and all that stuff about what, what exactly does it mean to join, make sure your name is on our, our list. And you would know that if you're getting the weekly insights email that I send out, which would also come out today along with this video. If you're not getting that, you're not on our list and you won't hear about the launch. So just know that's coming around Father's Day. And here's the last part. Uh, if I am gonna be in your neck of the woods, maybe we grab dinner, who knows? But I'm gonna be in Denver. Uh, June 26th through the 29th for a couples retreat hosted by my Go Abundance brothers. They, they call it a Go Couples trip. Awesome group of people getting together. I'll be in Denver around that time. Not sure how much time I'll have, but that I'll be there. I'm going to be at an event called Author Up Live, which is going to be uh, near Lancaster, Pennsylvania, June 3rd and 4th. And if you're out there, and by the way, you've written a book or want to write a book, you should check out this event um, and reach out to me. I might be able to uh, get you a little bit of a discount on that event if you reach out to me right away. But I'll be there with Mike Michalowicz, Amber Vilhauer, AJ Harper, other amazing people. Mike Michalowicz was just on the show. If you missed his episode, go back and listen to Mike's interview. It's awesome. He's the author of Profit First, The Pumpkin Plan, The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur, so many other great books. He's a prolific writer. You've got to check him out. I'm going to be in Akron June 20th for a speech at the University of Akron, and I'm going to be in Hudson, Ohio, July 21st through the 23rd for our Front Row Summit. And by the way, if you're out there and you want to do a something really amazing with your family. If you want to create an incredible family experience this summer, you should go to frontrowfoundation.org slash summit. Check out our Front Row Summit. We have a Next Generation Leaders Kids Camp, which is absolutely stellar. It is transformative. One of the members of the Kids Camp last year, a nine-year-old, wrote a book that, uh, uh, yeah, I interviewed her on our podcast, our Front Row Foundation podcast, which is called Facing Life. If you ever get a chance to check that out, Abigail Perez wrote a book about called How to Be a Super Kid, and it was all sparked at this event that we had, so check that out. Guys, that's it for now. Thanks for listening to the show. If you're digging it, leave us a rating and review. We'd appreciate it, and uh, invite your brothers to join the conversation. Let's build Front Row Dads. Let's make a difference to, to your family and ultimately to the world together. Uh, we're going to make this place, a, 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 make this planet a, a better place to be and a better place to raise families. Get out there, have some fun. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.